Hello and welcome to another video. I know you're familiar with the power rule, the quotient rule, the product rule, and this one more rule, the chain rule, okay. But there's something you probably haven't heard about. It's called logarithmic differentiation. Well, it's not a different rule. It's just that before you do your derivative or you take the derivative of the function, see if you can actually simplify it using the laws of logarithms. And that's what we're going to try to do in this case. Now, no matter how good your differentiation skills are, sometimes the, the function you're given is so complicated that when you try to, to do the direct um, differentiation, you're going to end up with some functions that are just too complicated to collect like terms and simplify and take care of the denominator because that's what's going to happen here if you try to do the quotient rule for this function on the inside. And that's where logarithmic differentiation becomes very useful because it's mostly algebra and maybe just one line of calculus differentiation. So let's look at this question. We're going to simplify and then we take the derivative and we just get to the final answer within maybe five or six lines. So the first thing I want you to know is that the laws of logarithms will apply here. Okay, so we know that if the logarithm of AB is given, you can actually rewrite this as the logarithm of A plus the logarithm of B, no matter what the base is. That's the first thing you want to know. And secondly, the opposite version of it is the logarithm of A divided by B. If that's the argument, you can write it as the logarithm of A minus the logarithm of B. And this is all we need to simplify this problem. Now, if you do not recall this from your algebra class or your pre-calculus class, you have to go clean up because it's very important that this is something you already know. Because if you don't know it, we can go ahead with this uh, problem. So now let's take the very first step of this. It is to apply, as you can see, this is a quotient. There's a function on top and there's a function under. So we're going to apply the very first rule, which is relevant to this one as the first step. Okay, so let's take the first step. We're going to say y will be equal to the natural log of the top, which is x squared, multiplied by the cube root of sine 3x. Will be, uh, sorry, and that would be because this is under, it's going to be minus the natural log of what is under and that is the square root of 2x squared plus 5. Okay, it looks so easy. Okay, it is no longer as crazy as what we had here. Okay, so at this point, let's see what else we can do. Uh, we can't do anything to this, but you see, this is a product of two functions. This is a single function, it's just a composite function, but this one is a product of a function times another function. So we can break this up using this rule. So let's see what we can do to this. So we can say y is equal to the natural log of x squared and then this multiplication becomes a plus but it means you have to bring the natural log into this again which is the cube root of sine 3x. Okay and this we have negative um, natural log of the square root of 2x squared plus 5. Okay, now one other, one other fascinating thing about natural log or logarithms generally is that whenever you have exponents, you can always take the exponent down to the back. Remember? Okay, that's what you need to apply here. But this is the only term written in exponent form. This is written in radical form, which is not the best. Okay, this is also written in radical form. So we're going to try and rewrite these terms in exponent form and this is just the entire function raised to power one third the whole of this raised to power one half so let's write that here so we've got y will be equal to um, the natural log of x squared then this is going to be plus this sine 3x so it's going to be the natural log of sine 3x 
everything raised to power one third. That's the meaning of cube root, and this is gonna be minus the natural log of two x squared plus five raised to power one half. Okay, now remember, you can do this to any function if it looks too complicated, introduce natural log to both sides, and then I'll show you how to do implicit differentiation in another video, okay? But for now, let's just go ahead with this. So now, we have all the exponents. We can take them down, take them down, take them down. See what we've got. This is the same thing as 2 ln of x plus, bring down the one third, it's one third of the natural log of sine 3x. Okay, this is the argument of this. Okay, minus, take that, that's one half of the natural log of 2x squared plus 5. Okay, I think we're done with the algebraic simplification. It's time to do the calculus part. Okay, so this is y. So let's take the derivative. What's dy dx? Okay, dy dx will be, you take the derivative of each of the terms, okay? That's allowed in differentiation, okay? The derivative of a sum of functions is the sum of the, deriv of the derivatives of the function. So of the function. Now we have two ln x, it's gonna be two times the derivative. So leave the constant alone because nothing happens. So keep the constant and multiply it by the derivative of the function. What's the derivative of ln of x? It's one over x. How do you know? This is the general rule for any natural log derivative. Let me show you. If I tell you that the natural log of x, okay, y is the natural log of x, then the derivative of this, dy dx, is equal to the derivative of what's inside, which is one, divided by what is inside. That's how you get your answer. Okay, if I change this to x squared, then it's the derivative of what is inside. What's the derivative of x squared? It's going to be 2x divided by x squared. What do you notice? <laughs> you notice that if you simplify this, you still get what? What would you get? You get 2 over x. If I told you that y is equal to the natural log of cosine x, okay, what will be y do y dx do y dx is going to be the derivative of this which is negative sine x divided by cosine x always it's just the derivative of the argument over the argument that's the general rule and it's always true for natural log functions when you take the derivative of a natural log function so remember to apply that here as we go on so i'm going back to this and it's going to be the derivative of this is going to be one over x plus I'm gonna keep the constant 1 over 3 I'm gonna take the derivative of this and remember what I said it is the derivative of what's inside over what's inside so I know that I'm gonna be multiplying this by something over sine 3x okay I just need to know what that something is can somebody tell me what the derivative of sine 3x is well it's gonna be cosine 3x multiplied by the derivative of what's inside. Again, remember, for chain rule, you multiply by 3. Always multiply by 3. And then we go to the next one. It's 1 half. We do the same thing. It's going to be this multiplied by, you're going to be dividing by this, 2x to the 2x squared plus 5. And then what's going to be on top is the derivative of what's inside, which is going to be just 4x. Okay, we're almost done. Now let's clean up, let's clean this up, okay? So we have dy dx is gonna be, this is gonna be two over x plus, so one thing I know is that this three can cancel out this three. Not this three, just this one. And what you have left is gonna be cosine three x divided by sine three x, okay, minus. Um, I know that this 2 can take out some 2 here, so you have 2 remaining. So here you're going to have 2x divided by 2x squared plus 5. It's not as bad as it would have been if you use the quotient rule, and then you have to simplify and simplify and mix things up. This is cleaner. 
Okay, so are we done? Well, there's no further simplification for this. There's no further simplification for this. If you try to combine this and this, it doesn't get simpler, it just gets more complicated. So there's no point doing it. But this looks like something we know. Remember that tangent is sine over cosine. But when you have cosine over sine, is the reciprocal of tangent, which we call cotangent. So we can say that dy dx is equal to 2 over x plus, this is not tangent, but the flipped version, that is the reciprocal of tangent, which is cotangent of 3x minus 2x over 2x squared plus 5. And that is the desired answer. Give this video a like, share it, leave a comment in the comment section, say something great, say something nice, because this video probably helped you. If it didn't help you, it's going to help somebody else you know, your neighbor next door. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Don't stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living.